Hey guys, Lewis here and today we're going to have a look at how you can create a 3D map similar to that found in the recent Modern Warfare. I'm a big gamer, I've been playing through this game recently and before some of the missions there's this cool map overview of the location that you'll be sent to. Typically in these games the overview is a digital map or perhaps a 3D render of the environment. In this game the map is presented in 3D space and it's been produced in a manner where it's as if we have a camera with a macro lens or something tracking above it. We have visual defects such as chromatic aberration and macro focus. And on some missions there are cuts of light as if it's coming through the rafters or something. So we'll be turning this into this. No plugins needed, just a paper texture that has some creases and crumples and a map image. Although to be honest, this could be done with more or less any image. Uh, but we're just going to be focusing on the map to imitate Call of Duty. Uh, so, by the way, uh, make sure both of your images are at least four times as large as your composition size. We're going to go ahead and create a new composition and bring in your map image and place your paper texture underneath. If you're familiar with After Effects, you may have guessed what we're doing now. We're going to add a displacement map to the map layer. We'll set the source to the paper texture and change both the displacement method to luminance and give it a hefty bump up to 25 or 30. Change the displacement map behavior to stretch map to fit and select wrap pixels around the edge. If you're unfamiliar with the displacement map, this is essentially going to cause the details of the map to conform to elements of the paper texture. For example, we can see the B within Bristol Channel has folded in on itself. However, this doesn't really look uh, like a realistic used map. So we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. It looks better, but also very friendly. And this is Call of Duty. So we're going to add levels to the paper texture and bring the midtones right the way up so it really brings out the depth of the paper. We're going to make both files 3D layers and then create a new camera and null object. Find a good starting point for your camera position. If you want to replicate the Call of Duty element straight on, then you're going to want to position and rotate the camera so it hovers directly above the map. Now we're going to create our lighting effect. We don't want the map to necessarily project shadows from the texture bumps because these shadows exist outside of the shot, you know, rafters, holes in the ceiling, uh, an open door, whatever. This involves nothing drastic. We're just going to create a new black solid, make it into a 3D layer and position it directly over the map layer, making sure that it extends past the edges of the composition as we'll be animating the camera a little later. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is use this solid as our shadows caused by the off-screen object. So you're going to take your pen and create a mask in a select fashion or it could just be blobs of shadows, whatever correlates to your image. And open the mask properties, extend the feather for 50 and then hit T to bring up the opacity and lower it to 50. Alright, it's looking good. Definitely looks like this map belongs in a grungy shed. But the trademark of all grungy sheds is a rusted light. So we're going to add a new light, which is going to be a point light. And we're going to color the light so it's slightly warm as if a tungsten bulb and increase the intensity to 130. We want to position the light off to the side in the way that the shadows have been cast. So in my example, I'll push it slightly above and to the right. Cool, this is looking great. Now we need to add the camera elements. Now truthfully, over the last few years, uh, I haven't really been on After Effects that much. It's been more color gradient based. Um, rather than motion graphics or anything like that, and I've been in Resolve. So I was quite surprised to see that two effects I wanted, a tilt shift and a chromatic aberration, aren't directly available and often require third-party plugins. But there is a cheeky way that we can get around this. So we're going to turn off the light and shadow layer for the sake of being able to visually see what we're doing, and we're going to create a new adjustment layer. Here we're going to add a chromatic aberration, and this is actually an effect for virtual reality footage. But we're going to use it anyway as it's quicker than using the channel mixer. First, change the vertical field of view to 130, reduce the fall off distance to zero and invert the fall off. Now this has created the effect where the chromatic aberration is only applied to the edges of the image, uh, kind of like in an oval shape, quite like an old anamorphic lens. Uh, we're then going to add grain to give the map a little bit of life. Not everyone has grain textures, so we're just going to use the built-in After Effects tool. And to be honest, uh, due to the nature of this effect, you can use whatever preset you want. Just make sure the intensity is set to half and that you tick monochromatic. Finally, we're going to make a final adjustment layer, 
and add a camera lens blur and the default value is completely fine. We're gonna mask the lower third of the image, invert the mask and add a feather of 100. This gives us that focus perspective that we're super close and quite like a macro lens, everything ahead is just out of focus. Then animate the camera position or not, up to you, uh, but this is the final result. Thanks to your intel, we tracked the Alcatala cell responsible for the Piccadilly attack so, to a townhouse. there we have it. Uh, to be honest, I had no intention of making this video. I just, I thought it was a cool effect. So I'm going to leave this now because I'm going to get back on the game, make sure my KD stays up, and I'll catch you guys soon.